Uh, my name is Kwan Vajang with the uh, Bohan Botanic Garden of Chinese Academy of Science. I have been working with the uh, Indo Basin Water Transit Project. When I move around in the local forest and the wetland, the river, generally kind of interesting about how this work. And uh, we people want to live with the nature and we need to understand what's going on there. And also we have a lot of activities to change all these things, like build a dam next to gorgeous and water transfer from one base to another. And we're trying to understand how our activities affect this nature. China will have uh, abundant water, but most of the water resources are located in the South. President Mao said we, we have so much water in the South, we have a little more water in the North, let's burn a little bit from South to North, and then we have this Indo Basin Water Transfer Project. Our top story this half hour, how China deals with a water shortage. It is the world's biggest water diversion project. Daarom wordt in China volop gewerkt aan het Zuid-Noordwaterproject, dat tegen het jaar 2015 water van het zuiden naar het noorden moet pompen. The project will carry the equivalent of 50,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools of water every day. The more water from south, Yangtze River, all the way to Yellow River region and all the North China Plain, and to further the needs of uh, social development. Another word I have used for, for environmental improvement, maybe a lot of people don't see that. And uh, we have uh, underground water and it depleted for a long time in Beijing, but once we get a source, this water from uh, south to Beijing and underground water and uh, will dramatically improve. So basically, this water is important for people, for the nature. And so it's quite important thing for, for doing water research. Maybe 40, 50 years ago, we wanted to change the areas and the federal needs, but for the past maybe two decades or three decades, we understand we need to live harmony with nature. Yeah, we need the nature to fit our needs, but also want the nature to be sustainable. We have monitored this area since 2004 until today, four times per year. We saw all this water quality, and there's all this measurement you can, we can imagine are uh, quite stable. Basically, the conclusion was that we quite beyond our expect, expectation with the water quality. We saw it much, much worse. But eventually, when the government uh, uh, implementation of a lot of projects there, and the water quality is quite stable. China was using major we call physical and chemical variables in the water. Right now, like uh, Europe or United States, the monitoring is called bio-monitoring, which use species to monitor water quality and the health of the uh, quality ecosystem in rivers or lakes. But in China, we're moving that way. I heard a couple of years ago, I think the Department of Ecology and Environment use my, uh, sort of uh, use bio-monitoring right now. Since we've reformed, and all the people who stand have been pulled. But we just lead by the party. And also, you can imagine all the facilities in here. I think the first time I come to the United States, 1997, and I will get off my airplane, and my, my supervisor came to the airport to pick me up. And uh, it was a shock, you know, at that time. And to have a freeway, and to have uh, people just drive around. I can't imagine. In my lifetime, I can drive around. I can have an own car. Let's just imagine it. I mean, for our generation, I say this, this, this is really something dramatic. <laughs>